So thanks for working with me, video number two. I won't take up too much more of your time, but this is a really important subject, so the second video is necessary. So records can, of course, be credible or not credible. Sometimes tests are delayed, files are incomplete. Maybe someone wrote in a way that doesn't make any sense. Maybe information is altered or fabricated. Maybe information is also lost. So there is credibility, and patients can request uh, that records be amended, right? So delayed filing a lab test. Flow for medical record might be impacted and complete or error in filing records. Maybe there's a record that's missing. Maybe it's a record that's important that's missing, right? You had a test that's done. The doctor consulted you on it, helped you with the test. However, the the record or from the test, the reading of the test is missing from your chart. That can really impact care in a negative way, right? So uh, a patient can ask for a chart to be amended, right? Sometimes there's chart notes that are put in. Sometimes there's information put in to make sure that if the patient was in a sense where they couldn't speak to the record, to what actually happened, they're able to protect themselves. And that's why that is put in place. So we talked about changes in medical records, and I just highlighted this. So most, most EHR systems track each user, their date, their time, when they put information in the record. And of course, when those changes are tracked, right, you can hold people accountable for the mistakes that they make. And also, you can cross out a mistake and initial and data and correct it. So new records, you know, it's different than a piece of paper, right? A medical record, when it was on paper, you could just cross it out, put a signature, say this was edited, fixed so on and so on. However, a little bit different from the perspective of electronic records, you're able to do it with an electronic stamp, a time stamp, and it's a lot simpler and easier. So individuals actually a lot of times find stuff in their record that they disagree with and they'll come to the provider's office, usually a group that deals specifically with the health record and ask for things to be amended. And healthcare providers are responsible or the group is responsible, health information management usually, they're responsible for reviewing it to make sure that the request is accurate, right? They're not going to change something if it actually happened. You can't just change something based on what a patient's desire is to be in their medical record. Say they have a, a behavioral issue and that's put in their medical record just because they want it removed doesn't mean that's going to happen. Maybe it's in the best interest of the patient. And that kind of goes into talking about you know, who owns the record. The patient does have rights, however, you know, a provider is responsible for making sure that information that's needed in the record is there so that they have the best care possible. All right, we're going to move from the knowledge question and uh, discussion activities. Uh, I do want to mention one thing. We're going to go over the summary really quickly, and I know this is going to be a short video in comparison to the last one, but I didn't want to leave out some of this stuff. So make sure for the test that you know what high tech is. So Google it like I did. Know about high tech, when it started. Uh, why it was put in place, know the importance of electronic health records and the impact that they have on patients and their lives, right? Who's, who's the owner of the health record? We talked about that a little bit. So remember, again, the person that wrote the record, the practice owns the health record, but patients have rights related to that, and providers are held by those rights as well. Uh, who's allowed access, right? We talked about minors. Some minors can say, hey, I don't want my guardians to access my record because this is something about uh, this is something in relation to privacy and that usually is only based on those dilemmas that I talked about like drug activity um, maybe something that might deal with abuse and there's a list there in a uh, slide above that you need to take a look at and it's also mentioned in the book all right a couple more things uh, what are the procedures necessary to release information from the health record how do you amend a health record talk about a little bit about we talked about health records and their credibility so understanding that a patient has the ability to request a change but uh, providers are also held to a standard of making sure the record is credible from the perspective of having the correct information in there lots of information in this chapter about the health record I hope you enjoyed it kind of went really quickly from the perspective of uh, the overview, but I want to make sure that you read chapter seven because it's really important that you do. It's a lot of information in there that I think is going to be helpful for you to remember as uh, you're going through school now and as you transition into the career path that you want for the future. If you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out. I appreciate this overview and I look forward to learning more with you as we continue through these chapters.